Given the equation of a circle in standard form, one of the skills that we need to be able to have moving forward is being able to readily identify what is the radius of the circle and what is the center of the circle. Now, keep in mind from our previous video, we said that we'll be looking for things that are of the form x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Now, with that in mind, our center is actually hk and our radius is r. So when we're taking a look at something like x minus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 25, we're telling ourselves that this quantity inside the parentheses is actually x minus h, and inside this parentheses, this is y minus k, and this quantity over here on the right-hand side, this is actually r squared. Now, one of the tricks that you can get for actually getting this, if you want to get into this mentality, is to say, let's take that x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. Take the x, uh, this, excuse me, the y minus 1, set it equal to 0, and take r squared and set it equal to 25. When you solve for x and solve for y and solve for r, that'll give you your center and your radius. So one step of algebra to solve for x, one step of algebra to solve for y, and one step of algebra to solve for r. So we'll get x is equal to 3, we'll get y is equal to 1. Normally when we take the square root of both sides of an equation, we would see a plus or minus pop up. However, given that the radius is referring to a distance, we would say that we only need the positive square root. So interpreting all of this, the center is going to be located at the ordered pair 3, 1, and the radius is equal to 5. Now, to reiterate, 3 and 1 are the numbers being subtracted from x and y, respectively. That's why the center is at positive 3 and positive 1. Now, if you don't see numbers being subtracted, rather, if you see numbers being added, then you can still get into the same mindset as before, where this is supposed to be x minus h, this is supposed to be y minus k, but the only way that we can wind up with a plus in here is if you see uh, minus a negative. So with those things in mind, we could also try the same thing as what we did on the previous problem, say x plus 5 is equal to 0, say y plus 6 is equal to 0, and say r squared is equal to 16. Once again, it'll be one step of algebra to solve for x, solve for y, and to solve for r. When we solve for each of these, we'll get x is equal to negative 5, we'll get y is equal to negative 6, and once again, we don't need a plus or minus in front of our uh, square root. We'll simply call that positive 4. So once again, the interpretation is going to be that the center of this circle is going to be the ordered pair negative 5, negative 6. The radius of the circle is going to be equal to 4. Good. Now with those things in mind, let's take a look at our last example here. This one is a little bit different because we don't see anything being subtracted from the y. Now, same mentality as earlier. This is x minus h or if we wanted to, we could also say x minus 3 is equal to 0 and do one step of algebra to solve for the x. We get that x is equal to 3. In the case that there is nothing being added or subtracted from the y before it's squared, uh, this one actually turns out quite nicely. Ignoring the square, we would just get y is equal to 0 and there's no more algebra to do there. Finally, as far as the radius is concerned, r squared is equal to 49. One step of algebra will allow us to solve for r. Again, we don't need a plus or minus. We can just say r is equal to 7. We don't need a plus or minus because the radius is referring to a distance, and distance is something that is not negative. So putting it together, we get that our center is located at 3, 0, and we get a radius that is equal to 7. Now, as long as the equation that we have starts in that nice standard form, this form that we refer to right back up here, this process is not too bad. Now, anybody who knows me at all knows that as soon as I say, oh, this is not too bad, I'm, I'm setting up a trap. Well, here's our trap. This is something that is not in standard form. This is referred to as the general form 
of a circle. The general form of a circle looks like the following. It would be what you would get if you took standard form and actually expanded it or foiled it all the way out. You would get an x squared term, you'd have a y squared term, you'd have an x term, you'd have a y term, and you would have a constant term. When you put all of those together, <coughs> this is what you get. Now, there is a method for converting from general form back into standard form, which is to complete the square twice. We need to complete the square once for the x variable, and we need to complete it once for the y variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is regroup. I'm going to put the x squared term together with the x term. So x squared minus 12x plus, and then we'll leave a little blank for where we complete the square. Then we'll group all the y terms together. We have a y squared term, and we have a plus 8y term. We'll also put a little spot here for where we will be completing the square with the y variable. This plus 27, I'm going to move over to the left-hand side by saying let's subtract 27 from both sides. So it shows up on the right side of the equation as a minus 27. Now the process for completing the square is as follows. We grab our coefficient of the first power term of both x and y. We'll do x first. We take half of this and we square the result. Simplifying according to the order of operations, first we do our division by 2 and then we square the result. Note the use of parentheses here because when we're squaring this negative number we need to make sure that we know that this is negative 6 times negative 6 not 6 times 6 and then make it negative. We get 36. When added to these two terms, this will create a perfect square trinomial. We balance this out by adding 36 to the right hand side as well. We do the same thing for the first power of y. We grab the coefficient, we're going to take half of that, and then we are going to square the result. Once again, simplifying according to the order of operations, this will be 4 squared. No parentheses needed this time because we're squaring a positive number. We wind up with a 16. 16 is what we put right back up here. And now y squared plus 8y plus 16 will be a completed square. To balance out the fact that we just subtract, excuse me, added 16 to the left-hand side, we also add 16 to the right-hand side. Now, this lends itself very nicely to standard form of a circle x squared minus 12x plus 36 is now a completed square. And there is a shortcut to figure out what that completed square is. The number that you get inside the parentheses, but before you square, is the number that accompanies the x inside the parentheses here. So this will be x minus 6 quantity squared. You can expand that or FOIL that to verify that your result is correct. If we do the same thing with the y squared plus 8y plus 16, we grab the number after we have divided by 2, but before we've squared the result. That will give us y plus 4 quantity squared. On the right-hand side, if we take negative 27 plus 36, that's positive 9, plus an additional 16, that gives us 25. This is now standard form of our circle. I will leave it to you, the viewer, to verify that this means that the center of the circle is going to be positive 6, negative 4, and that the radius of the circle is equal to 5. If you are struggling to make that connection, rewatch the first couple of examples here and see if you can piece it together.